of things you can appreciate about others. Did you watch UFC 264 on Saturday night? Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor, round three. Obviously, we know McGregor took the first meeting. Poirier took the second meeting just a couple months ago. And now this was the trilogy in Las Vegas, in T-Mobile Arena. And I've said this before. If you were to ask me about five, six years ago, if I was a UFC fan, I would have said, nope, not at all. Not really big into MMA. The one guy that changed my opinion, that got me glued, that got me hooked to UFC was Conor McGregor. When he knocked out Jose Aldo in 2015 to claim the featherweight title champion championship, that's, that's the moment when I just felt completely captivated by this Irish dude who has such a huge persona. He's got the bravado, the bravado. He's got that gait. He's got that strut, that confidence, that showmanship, the way that he can entertain. I don't think I've ever witnessed an individual that not only is is just as entertaining, but is the showman that Conor McGregor is because he's the reason why I watched that fight last night. No disrespect, or a couple nights ago. No disrespect to Dustin Poirier, who is tactically a really, really solid UFC fighter, really fi- an MMA fighter. He is a brilliant, brilliant fighter, a great fighter, no question about it. But the draw to me is Conor McGregor, and no one can sell a fight, whether it's selling a fight, whether it's selling a pregame introductory press conference. No one sells it better than Dust than, than, than Conor McGregor. But if you remove all the showmanship and you unpeel the skill sets of both of these guys, Dustin Poirier was absolutely fantastic yesterday. He's uh, a couple days ago. He's the real deal, Dustin Poirier. He's versatile with his jiu-jitsu background and his black belt. This guy can grapple. This guy can stand up and fight. He can take leg shots. And what I loved about him was the approach coming into this fight. Two very different approaches. You had Dustin Poirier, that was much more relaxed, buttoned up, wasn't trying to get into the verbal confrontation and altercations. He was about being being there to do his business, to be to do his job, stay locked in, and see where the chips fall. Where you had Conor McGregor, who actually looked very dialed in right from the beginning. He was very outspoken. His trash talking, of course, on point, as it always is. A big, he's a provocateur trying to provoke Dustin Poirier. And, and, and the thing is, the one of the things that, that makes UFC special is the fact that once you get inside that cage, talking goes out the window. Show me, don't tell me. Actions speak louder than words. You can throw out all the trash talking because this is you versus me. Mano a mano inside the cage. And it's one of the few sports, obviously, just like any competition, you have athletes that are extremely competitive and want to win. But there's something about the UFC when you strip guys down to their to the to their core and you challenge them where you've got guys that that have legitimate vitriol and legitimate disdain for the guy that they're facing in there. Other sports claim they truly hate their opponents. UFC, you sometimes have matchups where you got guys that respect one another as fighters but want to knock them knock each other out. Then you got those UFC fights where you have two guys who don't respect each other at all. They literally want to rip their guts out. They want to eviscerate their opponent in public and they want to send them on a stretcher. Now some guys actually verbalize that which is what Con- which is what Conor McGregor did and others 
are kind of just more about being about it and seeing what happens. And so when I, right when this, the first minute of this fight, I got to be honest, Connor looked great. He was delivering leg kicks successfully. I thought that he was doing a nice job just attacking Dustin Poirier early. He wasn't allowing Poirier to get comfortable at any moment during the first uh, minute of the, of the fight, of the first round. And I thought he was doing a nice job. And then where the, where the fight turned was once they started standing up boxing, then all of a sudden McGregor's no longer in the center of the ring and in the center of the octagon. Now you've got Dustin Poirier who's starting to win this, this punching uh, attack. He was starting to check some of Conor McGregor's swings, and all of a sudden, you've got Poirier pushing McGregor all the way to the fence, and now you're thinking that McGregor's kind of in trouble here, and that's when he had to resort to the guillotine choke to try and knock him out early and get him down on the ground, and credit to Dustin Poirier, most people might have had to have tapped out, and they would have surrendered that guillotine choke, and Dustin Poirier just just remained calm, remained composed, found his, his footing against the fence, was able to get his legs higher up on the fence, which is a really st smart strategy to avoid that guillotine choke that tries to bottle you completely in. And he was able to kind of get out of it, and there it turned into a ground and pound game where Dustin Poirier obviously has the advantages, the much better, much more skilled martial arts expert. He was starting to, to, to deliver blows to the head, to the ear of McGregor. Now, McGregor got a couple good elbow shots in, elbow strikes in to Poirier as well, but it was really Poirier at that point. You just knew with his, with his size, with the sheer size and weight, that he just was able to assert himself a bit more on the ground on, on McGregor. And then obviously when they when they got up, he checked one of McGregor's kicks, and the next step, McGregor ultimately breaks his leg, breaks his tibia. And so the, the schism between these two guys, the hostility, the animus between... These two guys is real. And they didn't mince words before, during, or after the event. And that's part of the reason why this was such a big sell, why, was, why this was such a big draw, is precisely that. Is because people want to see two dudes who truly hate one another. And I don't think that could be said necessarily after the second fight, but in the lead up to this third fight, that's that's what we saw. And again, Connor looked dialed in. He looked like a man on a mission. And you've got Dustin Poirier, who was unfazed by the limelight, unfazed by the spotlight in the moment, and stayed locked in. And part of that was evident just by the the lead up songs that they had coming into the octagon. So again, I I thought that there's no question. I thought Dustin Poirier looked like a better fighter. He's much more versatile. He's got a deeper skill set, deeper repertoire. He can go to more plans. He doesn't just have to resort to one plan. That that's that that's the thing about Dustin Poirier. He's he's not one dimensional, and I think that he clearly looked like, hey, if something's not working, I can then transition to something else. McGregor looked like, hey, I've got one plan. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm gonna go down swinging, and he went down swinging, unfortunately, or stepping down. So. I, now, I will say this, that with that being said, with the fact that I think Dustin Poirier clearly showed he's the better fighter, I don't think that Conor McGregor is washed up. I don't think that he fought uninspired or unmotivated or that he lacked the hunger 
necessary to be successful in a fight of this magnitude. I don't think he lacked that hunger at all, which is what other people were claiming. When when you make $400 million, sometimes you lose that edge, that chip on your shoulder that Dustin Poirier hasn't experienced yet, so he can still summon up. But I didn't see that with Conor McGregor. I just saw they got a guy that was facing an opponent at the top of his game who's much more versatile right now, who's gotten more experience in currently he's had more run in he's had more fights leading up to this one he looked like the sharper fighter mcgregor hasn't fought since fighting poirier a couple months ago and then prior to that he hadn't fought for a couple years when he beat cowboy cerrone and then it was floyd mayweather and next thing you next thing you know it's 2017 four years ago so I, I just the only thing was that it was su- it was such a disappointment that the fight ended so soon. It was such a shame that it ended so quickly in that fashion. At the end of the first round, I really felt like if McGregor could have gone it somehow, if he didn't break his leg and he could have gone it into the second round, I thought that his corner they could have talked about some different tactics because it was very entertaining. And to be honest, sure I gave the edge to Poirier, but the scorecard would have been pretty competitive. I think that the scorecard would have would have reflected the competitiveness that was shown through the first five minutes. And it's a shame that that we were deprived of more. And then it was only fitting that, of course, at the end of this, you had, you had Dustin Poirier basically saying in a postgame interview, I wish I could have finished him uh, with a with a proper two uh, as a reference to his whiskey company, proper number 12. So I just thought, again, clearly there was no love lost. Clearly these guys have legitimate animosity towards one another. And in the fight game, that's, that's kind of what you need. And that's kind of what you appreciate the most.